Hey, good morning, Team Redstone. Good morning, Sergeant Major. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody out there. Hey, welcome to our bi-weekly uh, Facebook Town Hall. Uh, we have a lot to cover today, so I'm going to get right after it. Uh, we have a couple of special guests today. Uh, Colonel Cardenas from Fox is going to be with us today. Uh, he will be answering uh, your questions. And, and also, we're going to have Mr. Scott Gillespie today to talk about what we've learned so far about facial recognition. So with that, uh, let me just talk real briefly on COVID, what we're seeing in the AO right now. Uh, as you probably have heard me say this before, we look at the 16 counties surrounding Redstone Arsenal where our workforce come in from on a daily basis and we take those measurements uh, on a daily basis to see uh, what our count is, what the Alabama count is, and make sure that we're you know, judging ourselves to, uh, to open things or close things as we need see fit. Uh, the good news is we're, we're looking extremely good. Um, we're, we're down in the single, um, not single digits, double digits for numbers around Alabama right now, including our 16 counties. So uh, that's a good thing. We've been maintaining that for a, a couple of weeks now, which is absolutely a positive trend. So uh, we see this as a good sign. Uh, we see it as a, a positive trend going downwards. For the last 14 days, we've seen a, a downward trend, not only on the arsenal, but in the 16 counties around the area. So uh, th this is good news for us. Um, under HBCOM Bravo, what we went to a couple weeks ago, um, we just want to make sure we're, we're postured from the garrison to accommodate uh, the larger percentage of workforce that might be coming in. Uh, we do know that some of the tenants are looking at increasing their workforce on the arsenal, and we at the garrison are absolutely postured and ready to support and serve them. We have a couple of questions roaming around about travel restrictions in the DOD website. Uh, let me address those right now. When we went to HPCOM Bravo, what we're saying is we're roughly the same as a lot of other Army installations around and that we think that we are safe, as safe as they are. And so what, we, what HPCOM Bravo did was allow us to go in between 40 and 80 percent of the workforce on the arsenal. So that maintains, you know, between 60 and 20 percent, if you will, of, of telework status. When we did that, what should have triggered was uh, a note to the DOD website allowing us to go to a, a travel. That there was no travel restrictions in anywhere around Redstone Arsenal. So we're working through that right now to make sure that that DOD website is going to be changed because there are no travel restrictions that we know of right now around Redstone Arsenal. So if, if you get telephone calls on that, please either point them our direction or uh, point them to the DA website, which have also travel restrictions, and they're showing that we're good. It's the DOD one that there's a little bit of lag on and that we're working with right now to make sure that there are uh, the, our status of no travel restrictions is on there. <coughs> Listen, uh, with that said though, even though we do see the positive trends of COVID going down, um, we are still under the DOD mask uh, um, mandate. So uh, anytime you're on the arsenal uh, and you're, you've, you've got to be within, in a mask. And we especially want that to happen if you're within six feet of each other. So. Um, Make sure you understand that DOD mask mandate, and we are adhering to it. Even if Alabama goes to uh, rescinds a safer at home order, uh, which might be coming up, so just realize that we will main, we will fall under the DOD uh, guidelines for all of it, and we will absolutely look for the CDC uh, guidance as well for uh, what they're saying for masks. <clears throat> okay. With that, I, I think I'm going to turn this over to, I know that you probably have some questions for Colonel Cardenas, and he's got some updates for us today. So, Bob, welcome. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Glenn. Good morning, Sergeant Major. Good morning, Good morning team. Garrison. Good morning, Team Redstone. So, the it's Colonel Cardenas, it's good to be back. I haven't been here for a while. So, what I'd like to do is uh, first talk about, just frame my update and uh, where, we've been, where we've been, where we are, and where we try to, we intend to go. Um, it's not lost on me then, but exactly a year ago this month is when our Fox family started uh, mitigating COVID exposures and risks. And you all probably felt that too with the uh, reduction in services and we thank you for your patience. From parking lot operations to establishing for the pharmacy to limited in-house services and also uh, in introdu introducing the screening uh, requirements that were mandated. 
uh, by Defense Health Agency. So we pr appreciate your patience as we would call a return to readiness for uh, since we really came back and opened the doors this summer and uh, things are moving swimmingly now. So where we've been, I just would like to kind of frame this, especially when it comes to vaccine operations. We're not yet in our fourth month yet, but December 10th was when the DOD released its first prioritization schema. And uh, since then to today, we are on our fourth iteration. That just illustrates the, uh, how fluid the situation is and the largest um, national mobilization of a vaccine and, and pandemic response in over 100 years. And uh, we thank you for your patience with that. So when it comes to the schemas, these were uh, directed by Headquarters DA, Department of the Army, and every op order to every combat command that every senior mission commander would adhere strict guidance to the scheme. And I want to, uh, with General Walker's guidance and especially with the support from the tenant units, they've done a great job, I think, in, uh, you know, identifying mission essential personnel. Nobody front loaded everybody. And that allowed us, because of our smaller population of a uh, green suitor, so to speak, we were able to do honor the schema, which is simultaneous, okay? It doesn't, um, it's iterative when you're, or it's uh, simultaneous when you're in a certain tier. And that's what we were doing. We were doing the mission essential people. We're doing high risk people. We're doing the uh, mandated uh, authorized workers around with food and, and taking care of our children. And uh, the commissary uh, personnel that handle food and close contact where everyone shops. So we've been in uh, one Charlie and some quick wins with that is whether you realize it or not, our site that we developed on the backbone really off of the pharmacy drop off to limit people having to come in. And I know there were some growing pains there. So we thank you for your patience, but because of your patience and your willingness to support us, that was the backbone, how we built our point system. And we were the first non-defense health agency site that was approved by the Army NEC, which was why we, our, our, our site was shut down for about four days. And I know that was a problematic for some people because we were one of the many sites that were, had, were vulnerable, deemed vulnerable in the Hack the Army program. And we fixed it. And with the, the Medcom G6 uh, experts helping our, our IMD team. And uh, we have a very responsive and we have fluidity, fluidity in our program because some of the folks that have to use the DHA now site that just came on board, they don't have as much. If you remember, we had a where we don't have a uh, personal army.mil page for the uh, Fox website. Since we had to migrate to the tricare.mil, we cannot personalize it as much. So that's why we rely heavily. We ask you to look at our Facebook site for uh, Fox specific messages to our tricare and enrolled beneficiaries. So um, that's where we're at now. The way ahead is as we anticipate, as any uh, good army tries to, uh, army unit tries to do, and that's what we're taught. We try to anticipate and look forward and working with our garrison partners and looking if and when we ever get an inordinate extra amount of vaccine. We're looking at uh, expansion plans on base somewhere else. Um, and we'll be happy to do that. And uh, we'll have some planning that have to, comes with that in terms of increased manpower. And of course, the rate limiting factor always is the vaccine amount that comes in. And uh, there is a question about the vaccine, so I'll answer that now. We are a, a Moderna designated site um, based on our uh, freezer capabilities. And we are not, uh, have not been told if and when we will get the uh, Janssen uh, vaccine or the one shot vaccine, rather. So the one shot vaccine is a, uh, in the military, so for right now, has been dedicated for fielding to overseas units the uh, one shot. So when we get that, we'll definitely factor that into our planning. We'll inform the senior mission commander, the garrison uh, team, and then we'll look at that and see how that impacts our, uh, our operations to, to field more, uh, field more appointments and field more access. Um, then I'll uh, pause with that. I'll turn it back over and then I'll, we'll see what kind of questions come up. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Colonel Cardenas. Uh, just, on, on behalf of the garrison, I just want to say thank you to Fox Army Health. You guys have been extremely professional and uh, timely with your decisions and uh, information that you put out, and we really appreciate it. Uh, we, we enjoy the world-class service you give us. 
And so from the garrison, I just want to say thank you very much for what you've been doing in very difficult times uh, with the amount of vaccines that you get. And uh, we appreciate you giving us uh, these, these briefings to keep us informed. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to move on. Um, and I'm going to answer the question that I get every single week. <clears throat> when is gate three going to open? <clears throat> I got good news and bad news for you. <clears throat> I am gonna open up gate three. The bad news is I, is I can't do it for a couple of weeks. Um, right now, we think we're going to open it up on 12 April uh, at 0530. Now, more will follow as we get closer to this to make sure that I can move the guards around and uh, do this responsibly and, and safely. What's happening is there's a bill payer I have a certain amount of guards. I cannot just open all the gates 24-7. So there is a bill payer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to what was pre-COVID conditions. And what that means is gate 8 will no longer be 24-7. We will go, gate 8 will turn into 0530 to 2100 <clears throat> uh, on, a, on a daily basis. That will allow us to move guards down to gate three, and we will have gate three open from Monday through Friday from 0530 to 1300 for inbound, and from 0530 to 1800 for outbound traffic. I know that's not ideal for everybody, but that is what we were pre-COVID, and that's kind of what we want to go back to, is that normalcy of what we had with our gates uh, pre-COVID. So, uh, I know it's going to be a little bit of a distraction for people as um, gate 8 will no longer be 24-7, so gate 9 will be the only 24-hour gate uh, after 12 April. So again, we think we're going to open gate 3 on 12 April. Um, more to follow on that as we get closer in the next couple of weeks. We will confirm that date with you and let you know via this Team Redstone website uh, that we are indeed going to do that. So let me just walk through what it means for the rest of our gates. We're going to hold the rest of them the way they are. Uh, gate 7 and Gate 1 are going to re remain the way they are. Um, gate 1, Monday through Friday, 0530 to 2100. Uh, gate 7, which is basically the Martin Corridor uh, between Gate 1 and Gate 7. Uh, Monday through Friday for Gate 7 will be 0530 to 1400 inbound, uh, from 0530 to 2100 outbound. Um, so hopefully uh, that's in inconvenience in anybody with those gates uh, shouldn't be any change at all. <clears throat> okay, so uh, that was the big news. Uh, let me just talk about weather real quick. My last weather update was at 0630 this morning from the NOAA um, brief that I get on a daily basis. Um, we're looking at some uh, moderate weather for Redstone Arsenal right now. We're in the moderate band. Um, it, it's going to pick up just a little bit at 1300. Right now, I'm going to get the next weather update at 1030 this morning. At that time, I will be conferring with a senior commander and we will be, I'll be giving him my recommendation. If the weather doesn't change and we stay in that moderate band for Redstone Arsenal, my recommendation will be ops normal for the rest of the day. If we see a change, then I'll make the recommendation to the senior commander and we'll go from there. But right now, if the weather conditions don't change to 1030 when I get my next weather update, we'll be going ops normal for the rest of the day. Okay, with that, I, I know there's some concerns. So if you have those concerns and you do live out to the west of us, including Athens and Decatur, which might be at a different band, you should work through your supervisor and uh, absolutely see what can be done. Um, I, I don't control the rest of the 72 tenants on the organization. I control the garrison and right now the gates are going to remain open as far as what I see. But that doesn't mean that your leadership can't absolutely put you on admin weather leave. So uh, work with them if you have any any reason to think that you are um, cannot work today for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Scott Gillespie to talk a little bit about what we've learned on facial recognition at our gates 9 and gate 1. Scott, over to you. Thanks, Colonel Malor. Um, good morning. I'm Scott Gillespie with the Garrison Directorate of Operations. Um, joining me this morning is Mr. Brian Ronwald. 
He's our chief of physical security and one of our technical experts on facial recognition. Uh, Brian and his team manage the gate operations here on Redstone Arsenal, including the guard force. Um, as most of you are aware, we implemented the facial recognition go live pilot test on March 15th at gate nine, lanes three and four, and gate one, lane three. Facial recognition provides rapid and continuous vetting and nonstop transition through the access control point with a camera at each identified lane. As a reminder for those of you that are uh, returning back to the arsenal, you'll see the uh, single occupancy lane SOV clearly marked um, identifying those lanes. And we just, have, we just have some tips for you too. If you're gonna try to use those lanes, uh, vehicles with multiple occupants, <clears throat> Motorcycles and bicycles should, should utilize non-facial recognition lanes. The current parameters uh, do not allow us to have more than one occupant in those vehicles. Um, observations and your feedback that we've received is greatly appreciated so far, and it's helped the contractor who manages the uh, software and the hardware uh, of facial recognition and AIE to make adjustments and, and corrections. So uh, your feedback is important. Um, some other tips that we, we want to share with the field is um, facial or head coverings that may interfere with the recognition process, including masks and hats, should be avoided. Also, anything that's reflective in the cab of your vehicle can cause problems uh, due to glare. So we ask that you take those items down. Uh, windshields and dashboards should be free of any items that obscure the operator's face, including items hanging from the mirror. Um, if you have heavy tinting in your vehicle, um, that could also cause problems with the camera picking you up properly. So if that's the case for your particular vehicle, um, please use a different non-facial uh, recognition lane. As far as speed goes, um, please maintain a speed of five to seven mile per hour as you proceed through the lane. And also keep a one to two car distance uh, between you and the vehicle to your front. In the event you don't receive a green arrow um, as you go through the lane, please take directions from the guard because just because you have a red um, X doesn't necessarily mean you aren't, you aren't vetted. In most cases, it's probably you're a contractor. Um, as you proceed through the gate, please ensure your window's down so that the guard can visually confirm your face to the automated installation entry database uh, that they have on their screen in their guard shack. Another, another tip that we're finding out is uh, if you sit too low in your vehicle or too high, that can uh, cause bad readings from the camera. Um, so you just might want to continue to adjust how you sit in your vehicle um, to find that sweet spot uh, where the camera's picking you up. Also, vehicles with a four inch lift can cause, um, result in the camera not properly uh, picking up your face. In this case, try to sit lower in your vehicle. Again, we do value your, your feedback. It's very important to us. If you have comments or questions, uh, please contact David Randolph, and we'll put this on the uh, Facebook um, in the notes section, the chat section. But it's David Randolph, and his number is 256-842-2460. And at this time, we did get a question um, on RFID. The question is, is there a limited amount of cards that will be issued for the radio, radio frequency ID lanes? Uh, those are the cards that you put in your dash. Um, what's the process to get one? So at this time, um, I'm going to let Brian address that and, and answer that question. Okay, so for, for RFID, uh, each individual that is authorized an RFID card will get one card. Um, it's identified to that individual, so you have, you have to keep it with you in whatever vehicle that you're traveling with. Now the process for getting one, if you're a garrison uh, asset, if you belong to the garrison, then you would come down to our visitor center and we can issue that card out. For tenant units and anybody not assigned directly to the garrison, my office has issued RFID cards out to your security managers. So you would need to get with your security manager and they can issue you the RFID if you are actually authorized to have one. Uh, turn it back over to Scott. Okay, thanks, Brian. Anything you wanted to add on the uh, RFID or the um, facial recognition? Uh, no, I'll, I'll be here to answer questions during the question and answer period. Okay, thanks, Brian. 
Okay, so that concludes my portion of the uh, of the update. At this time, I'd like to turn it back over to Command Sergeant Major um, Juan Jimenez to discuss special observances. All right, good, good morning, team out there. Again, like always, thank you for tuning into our virtual town hall. As as you can see, we were able to bring you some great information. I want to thank Fox and Colonel Cardenas and uh, Scott. Uh, for giving us that uh, good uh, rundown on, on Gates and Fox operations and the vaccine. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about some uh, good news stories, some observations that we're going to be uh, conducting on the installation. Uh, you'll probably see a slide come up uh, in the month of March. Uh, we're uh, observing Women's History Month, and the theme this year is Valiant Women of, of the Vote Refusing to be Silenced. Go to our uh, Team Redstone Facebook page to watch that video that's uh, been uh, uploaded for Women's uh, Observance History Month. Uh, also, what we're going to be doing this uh, Sunday is going to be recognizing our Gold Star Spouse Day on the 28th of March between 2 and 4 p.m. <clears throat> at the Persian Welcome Center. We'll be honoring our Gold Star Spouses there, so by all means, come on out uh, and uh, help us recognize our uh, Gold Star uh, Spouses out there. Uh, again, like all these observances, like the Colonel talked about, we are following the DOD uh, masking guidelines, so please uh, observe that uh, as we uh, bring these observations to you guys and recognize some great people. Uh, also on the 29th of March, uh, between 10 and 12, that's that Monday coming up, at the Exchange uh, Food Court area, along with the Exchange uh, and DECA and Redstone Arsenal, we will be uh, conducting uh, an uh, observing and recognizing our Vietnam War veterans uh, there at the food court as you walk into the main exchange. So come on out between 10 and 12 to help us recognize those individuals so uh, we can uh, uh, tell them what an outstanding job and just let them know that uh, we still care and we're still uh, looking out for them too as well. Uh, I know the Colonel talked a little bit about the weather as we move around with uh, normal operations going on. Please stay safe out there. As you move around and drive around, um, create some distance between other vehicles so we don't have no accidents. Uh, there was a question about finding out information about weather and other things that happen on the arsenal. By all means, download the Digital Garrison app. Uh, they have messages that get pushed out about weather or, or loud noises that you might hear on that app. So by all means, download that app so, and, uh, and select Redstone Arsenal so that you can get the latest information on, on that app as well. Uh, the Colonel talked about no travel restrictions for the arsenal, so by all means, uh, make sure that everybody's tracking that. Uh, we're able to, to facilitate up to 80% capacity on the arsenal. Um, there was also a question about the thrift store. Uh, at this time, it is a private entity. Uh, it doesn't look like they're gonna be coming back at this time, uh, so I don't see it opening up anytime soon. Uh, for MWR, moving into uh, some talks about MWR, the uh, Challenger Bingo, like most have seen, is back. You know, it is uh, uh, allowing 80% of uh, capacity in the uh, Challenger Bingo area, but we ask you to make some reservations 24 hours in advance. And the number to make that reservation, if you're interested in playing some uh, Challenger Bingo, is 256-955-3329. Uh, along with that, our MWR Post Restaurants and the Food Court is uh, allowing 50% of capacity seating now. Uh, we just ask you to continue to be safe and when you're seated, uh, after you've consumed your, your, your uh, food, go ahead and mask up as you exit back out. Uh, the library is also in uh, full open uh, capacity, uh, so by all means, if you want to go and check out a library, a library book, by all means, it is uh, open for business. Um, Right now, you probably wouldn't be looking at doing some auto detailing for your, uh, for your vehicle because there's a lot of rain, but as soon as it clears up for the month of March, the auto detail center is uh, given 20% uh, discounts for ceramic coating uh, of your vehicle. Outdoor rec, there was a question about outdoor rec. Uh, that question was about the harvesting of deer on, the, on Redstone Arsenal. I will get with the game warden in our outdoor rec to see uh, the uh, deer that's been harvested out of, out of uh, Redstone Arsenal. I don't have the exact uh, number or answer for that on, uh, for you at this time. Uh, other than that, uh, please tune into our uh, my my podcast that I got going there. It's called the Bluff Line. 
The most recent one we did was with Captain Wilson where he was talking about the Army Emergency Relief Program. And we talked about it. Uh, you'll probably see a video come out. And by all means, if you can find it uh, in your heart, give us a little donation to help soldiers out there that are in need. Other than that, uh, sir, I'll pass it back over to you. Okay. Thanks, Sergeant Major. Yeah, it's, it is that time to answer some questions. So uh, we have some prepoed questions, which we always appreciate. We can uh, get these answered. Um, uh, the first one I have is a tough one. Um, it's somebody from Lacey Springs, and what he's got a problem with is um, when his wife and daughter ride their horse on their property, uh, their horses are spooked by the loud noises that are happening. And so my, he, he is frustrated and he wants to know what he can do because he feels like his wife and daughter in, are in danger. So uh, there are a couple of ways we can uh, tackle this. Um, first of all, I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you make sure that it's uh, coming from Redstone Arsenal. If there's some construction in your area on, on any kind of uh, homes or um, roads, uh, they are also making noises. If it is coming from the Redstone Arsenal, um, I would absolutely have you inquire into our PAO office at the garrison and submit a uh, official noise complaint, um, and we, we will uh, take a look at it. Uh, the other avenue you can always approach is going to your senator's office and uh, filing a complaint there as well. Uh, unfortunately for us at Redstone Arsenal, we are an Army installation. We do make loud noises. It's the, it's the sound of freedom, as we always say. So I know that's not the answer you're looking for, uh, but unfortunately, we are an Army installation. No, not unfortunately. Fortunately for you, we are keeping the world free and safe uh, by making loud noises here. So uh, I know that's not the answer you want, uh, and you absolutely uh, get to make your choices of riding your horses, but uh, that's where we're at. I've already answered the question about travel restrictions. If there are any other ones, please uh, don't feel free to reach out to me and I will absolutely uh, give you more information as needed. And I will also answer any questions that anybody else from uh, you that might be coming in for contractors or, or others from other areas have about our travel restrictions. Hopefully uh, by Monday we will have this fixed with the DOD website. Uh, so hopefully that, that will be cleared up, that there are no travel restrictions coming to Redstone Arsenal. Um, the next question we had was, I am not associated with the Army, but work on the Arsenal. Is there a mailing list available for notifications based on gate closures, severe weather events, base closings, etc.? So it depends a little bit on what you're looking for. If you're an Army tenant and you get the Nipper website, the ad hoc system will absolutely should inform you on anything about weather closures and gate openings and closings as that. But anyone can go and get digital garrison for their, uh, on their app on their smartphone and download it, make sure your settings are correct, and if you have any questions about the settings, our PAO office at Team Redstone can help you with that to make sure you're getting push notifications on any gate closures we have or weather events. On the screen, what you'll see right now is uh, a way to download it. Um, take a picture of that um, the digital garrison um, banner there, and you can absolutely download that from any uh, smartphone that you have. So that's the best way to get any information on, on Redstone Arsenal. Um, so we've answered the question on Trusted Traveler in Gate 9. Uh, hopefully that. What we haven't answered is, has anything changed um, as far as cyclists riding through Gate 9? Um, so what I will ask you to do is take a look. We're going to push on this web website right now. We're going to push our cycling policy. Um, right now we allow cyclists to come through gate 9 at non-peak hours and on weekends. Um, but really trusted traveler and cycling, um, the question was a little confusing because those two really don't have anything to do with each other. Um, so I, I just ask you to make sure you understand our cycling policy and adhere to it. If you're not if you do not have a CAT card or an RFID card and you are a guest of the arsenal, uh, you are allowed to come on through gate 8 with a rec badge and you can cycle 
um, basically on the arsenal uh, as you adhere to the cycling policy. So again, uh, non-peak hours and weekends, you can come through gate eight, nine if you're a Redstone tenant. If you're a, a rec badge user and a guest of the arsenal, you can use gate eight. Okay, I think we've answered a lot of questions. Um, hey, for the deer population one, um, it, it is a concern for me. Uh, we have had several deer strikes for um, those people working on the arsenal as far as uh, mostly deers colliding with them on their way uh, to and from their place of work. I know that our, working with our game wardens, we, we looked at around 110 deer to be harvested this year. We did not get to that number. Uh, the hunters uh, just weren't as successful as they um, maybe could have been or um, quite frankly, I, I, I know from what I saw on the arsenal, it seemed like the deer knew you were coming. Uh, so they moved north to, to my backyard uh, when the hunting season started and now they're gone again. So. Um, uh, but I know we didn't get to the number we were looking to harvest this year, um, and unfortunately, they are. We are having several um, people hit deers uh, with their vehicles, or vice versa. The deer hit the vehicle, one or the other. So we just ask you to be very safe uh, as you're as you're driving around Redstone Arsenal. It is a problem, and we know it. Um, and and really, that's why we put the number where we we thought made sense this year to harvest that number. So. Um, hopefully that answered the question. Uh, to Curtis Taft, you will never see me have a Roll Tide coffee cup. Uh, I appreciate the comment. Um, go blue. Um, I am a big Michigan fan. Okay. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any other questions we have not answered yet. So. Right now, Sergeant Major, is there any other thing that you've got over there? Only thing that uh, I can see, sir, that hasn't uh, been answered, uh, well, actually kind of has. The, the, they're saying that uh, with the masking order April 9th uh, possibly going away uh, around the state, will the masking pro uh, pr procedure still be in place on Redstone? And yes, they will. We are following the uh, DOD masking mandate. So even if the uh, state goes away, uh, we will continue to follow the, the DOD mandate until that uh, expires or something changes on that. But yes, we will definitely follow the DOD masking uh, uh, protocol. Uh, let's see. When will the aquatic center reopen was a question, sir. I mean, uh, do we want to dive into that? Yeah, right now, um, unfortunately, we don't have an opening date on the aquatic center. Uh, we're, we're still looking at it, but um, unfortunately, we, we've also got some budget constraints this year, um, and uh, right now we're looking hard at what uh, those, those category of, of services that we can provide and, and still either break even or make money on. And right now the Aquatic Center is, for the last three years, it has not made money. So um, my, my higher headquarters is asking me to make sure that uh, in these fiscally constrained environment that we have right now that I can um, look them in the eye and tell them whether I'm going to make money or not. Unfortunately, uh, this is an area where I'm, I'm looking hard to try to figure out a solution. Um, I'm asking my MWR team to, to take a look at this as well uh, to see if we can come up with a solution for the aquatic center. Right now, I have no opening date for that. Roger that, sir. And, uh, you know, like you talked about, uh, financial constraints, I mean, it hit everybody, so we're looking at other little things that are out there. Don't want to dive into every question, but uh, uh, by all means, we're looking to see how we can uh, possibly do things differently or, or help out in keeping some of those uh, resources uh, going. Yeah. Hey, there's been a couple questions for the food trucks that I'm seeing online. Um, as far as I know, we are allowing all the food trucks to come back that want to come back right now. Um, in fact, yesterday I, I did see down in the NASA area uh, on the corner of Martin and mm, Toftoy or Martin and there, there were some food trucks in the uh, big arena that NASA have down there for allowing uh, people to come eat. Um, so uh, hopefully that question is answered. Oh, 
I'm, I'm being pointed in the direction to go back to Scott Gillespie on a question. So questions. back over to Scott. Thanks, sir. Uh, we got a question on the radio, radio frequency ID um, for retirees. Um, how does that process work for, for them? So I'm going to let Brian answer that question. Okay, so the, the question actually was how does facial recognition work for retirees? So facial recognition, uh, if you are registered in our AIE database, then you can use facial recognition. So as a retiree, um, when you first time you came through our gate and, and re registered your retiree ID card, you became registered in our database. So facial recognition will work with retirees. So you just need to follow the other things, single occupancy vehicle, make sure you're not wearing any hats, masks, and things like that. So uh, it should work for you. If you're not, please give us a call and let us know, and we'll try and help you figure out what, what the issue is. Thanks, Brian. So we had one more question about um, custodial changes that are coming to us right now. Uh, we are looking at some, uh, some cuts in a few areas. Um, hopefully these uh, can be worked through and we uh, we'll, we'll try to do the best we can in making sure we tell everybody what's coming. Um, what's happening is um, we were told to cut about $1.9 million in this area. Uh, to do this, what has actually been done is we have to come to a new baseline of services around the arsenal. So what we've asked the all the customers, all the tenants on base, is if they want to maintain the same level of service that they currently have, uh, that we've given them a dollar figure and um, about 70% of those tenants are going to pay that extra money uh, to keep the common levels of services the way they are. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are some tenants around here that cannot pay that money and including the garrison proper being one of them. Uh, so we are looking at some custodial changes. Um, primarily what it's going to be is you're going to have to be looking at taking out your own trash. Um, there are also some other changes as far as carpet cleaning and some other changes as far as how, ma how many times the bathrooms get cleaned per week, um, but more to follow on all this. If you've got questions, absolutely reach out to me and uh, I will try to explain it to you as best as I possibly can. Uh, just realize that um, I don't want to make these changes, uh, but again, as Sergeant Major and I alluded to, we're our budget is being cut, and so we've got to make cuts where we, we think we can, and we're doing the best we possibly can to, to figure this all out uh, and put these pieces of the puzzle all together uh, to try to keep the services as, as, for what we can to the most, as many people as we can. Uh, so uh, that's custodial changes as I know it right now. We're a little bit past the halfway point, so I know normally about the halfway point, I, I ask everybody to Give me a thumbs up so I know that you're still out there listening. Uh, if you could give me a thumbs up so I know that uh, you're good to go. I appreciate uh, your time. I appreciate you uh, tuning in to all the information that we have to bring you guys. Uh, by all means, thank you guys. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn this back over to Colonel Cardenas at this time uh, with, at Fox Commander. Bob? All right, thank you. All right, folks, um, so just uh, some other announcements non-COVID related. We do have uh, the veterinary clinic is open and has been. Actually, they've been able to expand their capacity from what you're probably used to. You still have to be mindful that they're following all of the masking, safe distancing protocols that the uh, garrison commander, Sergeant Major, alluded to for other ver uh, garrison services. Our dental clinic is operating as well, operating well, and uh, just be mindful that there may be some limitations in the future um, just because of personnel turnover and uh, folks uh, resigning and moving on to other positions. Or, um, and then also, when you do get, your, get scheduled for a COVID vaccine, we do ask you the, you know, that you, the way that works is when you get registered, unlike a lot of other places, we, our system automatically books you for a window on the anniversary of your next date. So it's kind of like when you manage your checkbook, the best example I can say is, Please do your best to be available on the 28th, kind of like a bill, where you're uh, available <clears throat> between the 28th and the 30th. Just uh, some other updates. Um, next Friday, 
we will be open from 8 to noon. We put that on our website on Facebook, as well as uh, putting uh, flyers out in the, in the facility this week. But we are uh, required to uh, uh, conduct some Department of Defense mandated training. And being a military uh, treatment facility, we will abide by that. So we're open only from 8 to 12. Our appointment system planned for that um, months ago. So uh, there should not be any issue there. Um, sometime, I'm giving you a warning order now, sometime on around the end of April, we will uh, uh, downgrade from the uh, screening um, or screening uh, requirement where we will not, we will ask you to basically self-check yourself. If you're feeling sick or you've been in contact, instead of somebody asking you those questions, you should know and then you can, and don't report or reschedule your appointment if you have one um, because we're going to put those folks, everything that we've been doing, every mitigating factor for the last year is a term we use in the military. If you're familiar, it was out of hide, quote unquote, and it's people being repurposed and that's the reason why maybe some appointments weren't available because those personnel were on shift to do screening and we've been authorized for quite some time now we just wanted to get through cold and flu season and uh, give time for our beneficiary population to be able to respond but a lot of military facilities have done away with that months ago and uh, it's our turn and also we have lifted and shifted so to speak in the military term if you can bear with me to our COVID vaccination efforts and there's manpower requirements there that are not just clinical and uh, we're moving the personnel to support that effort now and remember all of this is done as you heard the commander and sergeant major talk about budget cuts i will tell you that the uh defense health agency or the, the was uh decremented almost over 600 million dollars back in january so every military treatment facility army navy air force felt that and all of this was no higher, so we're, I really, you know, if, if you don't know or you don't, I know you got life going on and you're busy, but I really, you know, am proud to be, you know, the commander of Fox when you have 200 civilians and uh, contractors and 2018 military, because the one thing that we can always reside, refer to in the military is, you know, just the just do it, go get it attitude. And, and unfortunately, sometimes some people are compared by a system we called UCMJ. And we've had a lot, the entire civilian staff has thrown out their PD, their position description they signed up for years ago and has said, how can I help? And that's what they've been doing. That's how we've been able to survive is by the cooperation and the selflessness of the, uh, the Fox family, which especially our, our civilians and uh, contractors. And um, there was one last question, so can retirees get? Definitely, and that's what we've been doing. So what I would offer real quick to answer some of the questions about eligibility, if you look at the tier system, you really start getting into high-risk high, high risk beneficiaries in tier uh, two, I'm sorry, yeah, tier uh, one Bravo, or, yeah, and then uh, tier uh, one Charlie, and then ultimately tier two. So one Bravo, one Charlie, one Charlie is our largest population. If you're the Fox uh, Army Clinic hasn't always been staffed with that number that I just gave you to treat 13,000 enrolled beneficiaries, 13,000 enrolled. That's what we're built for. When the Department of Defense, because this is a, a schema, this is a, this is a human crisis need. It's not based on your whether you're active duty, your guard or reserve, whether you've ever served or not. It is not based on that. It is based on mission essentiality because we are not, we are, like the commander said with the, with, the, um, with the ranges and the noise, you know, we have a military mission. You know, there's the CDC scheme and priorities, and that focuses a lot on the uh, response or the responders out there on the outside the gate, but we have a military mission and they balance it between, and also the physical needs. So when you're talking about retirees and all, we have over 7,000 500 retirees of our 13,000 or enrolled beneficiaries that meet a high risk need in one Bravo and one Charlie rather. Phase two, we have, it's the invert. We only have about 4,500. So they're the healthy population. And uh, when they, uh, Department of Defense built the schema out based on all the uh, previous screening criteria I mentioned, um, it tripled my uh or our requirement and our responsibility to take care of 
the community with COVID vaccinations once they, they started being fielded. It went to 39,000. So you hear about that roll of that number. I, I've heard it since I've been here about Redstone, 40 to 50,000 commuters a day, the workforce pre-COVID. That expanded and it tripled our um, people that we would never see before. All right, and that's fine because we're getting uh, supply for that and we're getting sourced for that when it comes to vaccine, but we're not getting sourced right now when it comes to personnel. And whether you realize it or not, if, you, if you're on Redstone or if you've been to Redstone, this is the first place I've been to where all the military, all the medical people that work on an installation work for me. There is no brigade combat team here. There is no um, extra units where, you know, the AMC surgeon can task a platoon of medics to come help us give vaccinations. Okay, and as much as I would like to, I'm an expired EMT Bravo and I can't give a vaccination right now. So, it, you know, there's only people that can do that. Okay, so a lot of people, anybody can man the door as long as they weren't high risk and they have been doing that selflessly. But um, there are requirements on who can give you medical treatment. So uh, we appreciate you bearing with us all this time, but hopefully that answers your question. I think I got one more, ma'am. Maybe I answered it or not. I'll be happy to. Okay, the better access to care. Yes, we're working through that as well. And uh, just be mindful. Um, again, it's not a sob story. I'm not making excuses. I just want to make sure we all have the same common operating picture, which is people still choose to retire. People still choose to go to other positions. And we have turnover. And like I said, when you have mostly military, uh, DA civilians and or contractors, they can go whenever they choose and we support them and we'll uh, ensure that we take care of them and always treat them with dignity and respect. But for me, for example, you got me for two years because it's a thing called orders. So and then so there's a system that pre replaces me and just as I uh, you know, had the honor to replace Colonel Metter before me. so. You know, it's a different, okay? So that's just one of those things. We don't have a big military footprint where a military doctor reports and is here for, you know, three to four years based on uh, manning guidance, you know, by the Army. So civilians can uh, come and go, and uh, we all wish them the best. So that affects sometimes our accessibility because I'm not the only one. I'm sure the garrison commander can speak to it that when somebody leaves, you know, if they're entitled to, they're only required to give me a two week notice. And that's fine, and it takes about three to four months if you're lucky to replace them through the hiring process right now and, and the COVID mitigations and the teleworks that the, the, the hiring office is going through. And yes, you do have to make an appointment. There are no walk-ins. You have to remember this is uh, not like the flu shot and uh, where you can just, just fun once, fire and forget. You have to be appointed, which um, because it's once you uh, open a syringe, meaning the needle goes in, there's 10 doses and that syringe is only good for, or that uh, needle, that dosage, because it's thawed, that vial is only good for six hours. So we're not giving, uh, eventually, they're, or they are discussing. So for us, what we're interested in is Moderna, obviously, a um, vaccine uh, delivery system, which is a one-shot vial, which would allow us flexibility if somebody make could make their appointment and said, hey, I'm about, you know, six, eight, you know, you can really go up to about 45 days now, which is the science for our vaccine between your first and second dose. And we can just say, come on in and uh, we'll give you the one shot uh, syringe that's preloaded. And we don't have to worry about, in that example, finding nine other people before we, or we'll schedule you and say, well, when we get nine other people, we'll get, we'll get to you. That's the, that's the, that's the uh, science to this um, crisis response. It's, we have a two dose uh, system right now. Everything's two dose with the exception of the one. And uh, the art is everything that I just described and what the garrison's doing is trying to make ends meet with little money or reduce money. That's the art to any problem. So there's art and science to everything and we appreciate you uh, working with us and bearing with us. Uh, I think I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Glenn. Yeah. Hey, hey thanks, Colonel Cardenas. Um, I, I don't think people realize the extreme complexity of figuring this out in a, a pandemic uh, with this COVID vaccine. Um, so I just want to say thank you for what you and your team do on a daily basis around here to try to figure the, this moving puzzle pieces out. Your, your 
design for a Fox Army Health, I'm sure, was not designed to uh, be able to uh, perfectly handle a, a, a pandemic like this, but we just want to say thank you so much for what you and your team do on a daily basis for us uh, to keep us healthy and safe. So thank you for that. Hey, there are some uh, other questions about it. And if, if you do have some other questions for Fox, absolutely reach out to their website and reach out to uh, them, uh, their, their appointment lines, etc. They're doing the best they possibly can. Uh, just remain patient with them. And uh, just remember that uh, a lot of times, uh, sometimes you can find those COVID vaccines in other locations besides Fox. Um, so always reach out and, and do your best to find the best alternative for your situation. Well, I'll leave that at that. Um, we do have, oh, I think that might be it for today for questions of what I see online. Um, so I want to thank you for joining us again today. A uh, special thanks to Colonel Cardenas, Fox Health. Um, Mr. Gillespie with facial recognition and gate questions and Sergeant Major and uh, over to you for any parting comments. Okay sir, uh, like always thank you guys so much for tuning in to our virtual town hall so you can get a lot of the uh, latest information as you can tell today we had a lot of good information bringing out to you guys from uh, Fox and uh, all the way to our uh, our gates and, uh, and adjustments and openings to the gates and some of the observances that we got so a lot of good information out to you guys again it is team rest on it is a team effort to get through this I mean March of last year like uh, Colonel Cardenas talked about to, to March of this year we've made great strides and it's really because of you guys our community that's also helped out and, uh, and getting better and doing the right thing and uh, staying aligned with us and uh, as helping us answer some questions or getting some good questions out to us so that we can answer uh, and keep everybody well informed. And uh, other than that, sir, I mean, thank you guys for everything and uh, we'll see, we'll bring in some more questions and we'll get you answered uh, and uh, back online. Yep. Thank you, sir. Hey, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, stay safe out there. Um, uh, if you're if you're driving in inclement weather, absolutely be safe and slow down, um, and and take care of each other. So, um, Mr. Taft, go blue. <laughs>